What's up guys, I'm Zach. Merry Christmas and welcome to my shop. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this zipper style cutting board. Now it's made out of paduk, maple, zebra wood, and walnut, and it's for my mom. Let me show you how I did it. I've never tackled a pattern cutting board like this. They require a lot of precision and careful measurements to get things correct. And as a Christmas gift, this seemed like the perfect opportunity to produce one. Now I don't have a joiner, but a trick to getting a straight edge is to use a taper jig on your table saw, which I did with the zebra wood, and then use the flattest surface I had to test to make sure that it had worked. Then I went back to the table saw to rip down all of my woods to their proper widths. Starting with the zebra wood, and then ripping a few thin strips of maple, followed by the paduk. The zipper design manifests by creating a striped pattern with a main piece of wood as the centerpiece, walnut in my case, but then off-centering it so that when you go to flip pieces, it creates an offset pattern. For the glue up, I'm using Type Bond 2. Now Type Bond 2 is both water resistant and food safe, and although it's not quite as good as Type Bond 3 for cutting boards, it is cheaper and it works just fine for these projects. I applied glue evenly to all the joints and brushed it in to make sure that it was spread evenly and then clamped things up. Now because I'm using some pretty expensive woods, I tried to buy only what I knew I would need for this project, but this meant I had to be extra careful in the process to keep things as flat as possible so that I didn't waste material when I went to plane things down later. This meant using a series of calls which helps apply an even force on the top and bottom of the glue up and prevents things from slipping as you apply a perpendicular clamping force. And then I let this cure overnight. The next day, I could plane things down. The calls were really effective in keeping things flat, and my goal for planing was only to remove the glue and a single thin layer of wood, so I did passes on each side to remove the glue and only turn the knob about a quarter turn each time to minimize the amount of material that I removed, as well as prevent any tear out or snipe. And it left me with a really smooth surface. It helped having basically brand new blades on my planer. The next step was to square up one of the ends, so I used my table saw slit to create that surface. The key here is just to make sure the fence is exactly 90 degrees to your workpiece. Once I had a flat surface, I could then rip my piece down into strips that were a little over an inch wide. This sled only has a fence on one side, so to do repeated cuts, I had set up a spacer block up against the fence that I could reference each time I went to rip those strips. Now next was the fun part. I laid out all my strips and turned them 90 degrees to expose the end grain, and then to create the zipper pattern, I could flip every other piece 180 degrees, which offsets that middle walnut piece and creates a beautiful looking pattern. That zebra wood in particular was some of the most unique stuff I've ever worked with. The next step was much like the first. To glue things up, I rotated the pieces back down and applied a thick coat of glue to all of the surfaces. You want to have good squeeze out here for this final glue up to ensure that all your surfaces have a really good jointed bond so that down the road as you use this cutting board and it experiences a lot of wear and tear, things don't open up. Then, much like before, I clamped things up using a series of calls and clamps from all sides, paying particular attention to keeping things as lined up as possible so that the pattern stayed as even and precise as it could. The whole project can kind of fall apart actually in this step if you allow things to slip and slide in the clamp up process. Now I know there is a lot of controversy in the woodworking community about planing end grain due to just the overall safety concern of it. Here's what I'll say. I chose to use my planner for this step. I've had it for over a year now and I have a pretty good understanding of its limitations and I had a fresh pair of blades on this thing. Now while I understand the safety concern around planing and grain, I made the personal decision to do this. If you don't want to do this, then I recommend using a router sled, which I've shown in a few of my other videos and I'll actually link in the top corner as an alternative option. Now as I've shown here, I ended up using a flat sled as a reference surface and used a really thin shim to stabilize the piece as I ran it through the planer. By doing so, it created one perfectly flat side that I could then flip around and run that flat side through the planer again, giving me perfectly even surfaces on each side. Again, do what you feel comfortable doing for this step in order to get a flat surface. 
As you can see, for me, because I used new blades and I took very, very light passes, I was able to achieve a very clean surface. Once I did, I could go back to the table saw and use the pattern as my straight line reference with my table saw to square up all four sides. Because the edges won't be perfect, it's actually really important to take your time measuring and lining things up here so that you don't end up squaring up the edges slightly at an angle because your piece can actually start to look kind of crooked here. After squaring up the sides, I did a first sanding pass on all surfaces with 80 grit. The finish was actually pretty smooth already from the planer, so it only took a few minutes to do this. Before moving to the next step, I decided that a very light chamfer on the top edges was the best solution to bringing out the beauty and the profile of the which I did over on my router table. I then wet the entire piece to raise the grain and then sand back down so that when this thing got wet for the first time when being used, it wouldn't become rough to the touch. And at this point, I noticed I had an audience who was rather interested in the project. Hi! Once the piece dried, I sanded up through the grits using the orbital sander to get all of the edges with 120 grit and then did hand sanding with 220 and then 400 grit. And I only used the higher grits to sand the chamfers. The orbital sander felt too aggressive for them and I then used my leaf blower to dust off the piece. Before finishing, I rubbed in some mineral spirits to all sides of the piece to help collect all that dust that can gather inside all the pores when you use that really fine grit sandpaper. For finish, I'm using my current favorite butcher block finish which I used for my kitchen island top from Emmett's, and this was incredibly satisfying to watch. The finish applies really easily. Just rub it in with a circular motion using a cloth and let it cure for a few minutes and then come back and wipe with the grain to fully smooth it out. Then let it cure overnight. And with that done, you can call this project finished. So that's gonna wrap it up for this project. Uh, I had a great time doing it. It was the first time I ever tackled something complicated, designed like this using really expensive hardwoods, and hopefully my mom likes it. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button, and I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. I try to put out projects every couple of weeks, and it would be awesome if you guys stuck around for it. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.